we're headed toward demonstrating that s squared is unbiased for a sigma squared. In other words, we're trying to justify that pesky n minus 1 in the denominator of s squared. We're getting there. So let's see what we've done so far. We remember that the variance of x is, by definition, the expected value of x minus mu squared. And we've shown that we can express that quantity as expected value of s squared minus mu squared. This is all at the population level. But now I want to think of doing the same thing, the same concept with a sample. Suppose I'm interested in the sum over a whole bunch of values in a sample of the sample values minus the sample mean squared. And this should look familiar. This is the numerator of s squares. So here, this is the expectation. This is actually the variance. This is the numerator of the estimate of the variance. So really, I should put in a 1 over m minus 1 here to make this equal to s squared. But I don't need it for the moment just to show you what this quantity can be equal to. OK? So just like I did when I was doing this derivation above, I'm going to multiply out what's inside the summation sign. I've got the sum of um, i goes from 1 to n of xi squared minus 2x bar xi plus x bar squared. Just like I took the expectation operator and applied it to each term in the parentheses, I can do the same thing with the summation sign because the summation of a sum is the same as the sum of summations. So I've got the sum i goes from 1 to n of xi squared plus the sum i goes from 1 to n of the quantity negative 2x bar xi plus the sum i goes from 1 to n of the quantity x bar squared. And just as we did when we were thinking of the expectation in order to derive this idea, we're going to look at each of these sums and see what can be factored out. In the first one, the answer is nothing can be factored out. You need those xi squared. This is the sum of every value in your sample after you've squared every value in your sample. Now we get to the second term. We've got a negative 2. That's a constant. That can come right out of the summation. x bar is also a constant in this case because it doesn't have an i attached to it. No matter which unit in the sample I have in mind, at the particular moment, if you ask me what x bar is, x bar is always the average over everybody in the sample. In other words, x bar can also be factored out of that summation sign. So what I'm left with is the sum of all the xi's. Same idea over here. x bar does not have an i in it. x bar is a quantity that's not specific to any unit in the sample. So I can factor out that x bar squared, and now this is just the sum of the number 1 a whole bunch of times. But just like I did in the parallel case where I took a mu squared out of an expectation operator, now I've taken an x bar squared out of a sum. If you add up the number 1 n times, you just get n. So this goes away, and I'm left with just an n right here. So this first term is still here. I've got a negative 2x bar. So what is this piece right here, the sum of all the xi's in the sample? That's the numerator of the sample mean, right? Recall, here's something you know, that x bar is equal to 1 over n times the sum of all the values in the sample. That implies that the sum of all the values in the sample is equal to x bar times n. And that's the property I'm going to use right here. Negative 2x bar times x bar times n. There's a square here because there's one x bar here and one x bar that's coming out of this. Great. Plus x bar squared times n. So what am I left with? The sum of the xi squareds minus 2n x bar squared plus n x bar squared. In other words, we've got some cancellation here minus n x bar squared. 